go on to the comprehensive plan update. I got some slides here. So we call it planning burks tomorrow. This is the let's see here. So we start with some survey findings. Um, first thing we did is we sent out a survey. We had about 500 responses. Uh, we, had, we had some open-ended questions, so they were quite involved. Um, we had some great, great data. We learned uh, the number one response is we like the people in Berwick. There's something distinctly Berwick about Berwick people. Uh, <laughs> That's good and bad. <laughs> good and bad. <laughs> There's something in the water for sure. Um, the number number two answer, not far behind, is we appreciate the rural character. What does rural character mean? It means the brick buildings downtown. It means the feeling of knowing your neighbor, the the quaint uh, historic buildings, peaceful rural areas, and the fact that this is our home. And we like that we're close to tax-free New Hampshire for shopping, cities, beaches, mountains, and our jobs. And the cool thing is that these responses are very similar to those responses from 1990. And also what's cool is we know from the demographic data, the survey takers are actually very different populations. We know based off of the age, based on how long they've been in Berwick, they have two very distinct populations who are saying the same thing. So what we like about Berwick has not changed over the 30 years. Very cool. What we don't like about Berwick, tax burden, lack of businesses, blight, lack of a downtown place to go to, not much to do. And conveniently, the edge solves all five of those. <laughs> I highlight number six because that's the most controversial issue in, in town. I feel like that's a point of discussion that comes up quite often. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. So to go along with the surveys, uh, we have past surveys over the past seven years. We've done a downtown survey. We've done several charrettes. We've done market analyses. We've done recreation surveys and uh, recreation um, feasibility studies. We've done two traffic studies, one focused on parking and traffic counts. The other one focused more on the walkability and, and bicycle infrastructure and really conceptual planning. We have uh, urban park and stormwater infrastructure. Uh, the survey I mentioned, we have a lighting plan, we have a branding guide, and I'm sure I'm missing about 10 to 15 others that we have at our fingertips. And these are integrated and support the comprehensive plan. The top themes and priorities from the survey data and everything we, we have um, at our fingertips, preservation of farmland, uh, that's uh, Wentworth Road, Blackberry Hill Road, our open spaces in our rural areas and our natural resources. We want a vibrant downtown and village center. We want excellent recreational offerings in areas and programs. And we want to solve this wicked problem we have with local government, which is communication. Um, you know, we always hear, I didn't know about this or that. And we are trying to innovate to reach people more and more in more meaningful ways. And I think it's a long term goal. I mean, we have BCTV, we have the Baroque Mailer coming, we have flyers and posters and um, social media, our website, and we keep innovating as, as we have to. And I think the number one, the number one thing, um, cause it all kind of scales, it all kind of layers on top of each other. And the lastly, the thing is of coming to affordability of taxes, housing and other local costs. I think that's kind of the challenge of our time. So starting back at the, the base layer of, of natural resources, so this map, map here, um, the darker the green, it, the more concentrated the area of our natural resources. Mm -hmm. So that's where our endangered plants and species are. That's where our open space is. Um, that's, that's where we wanna focus our efforts for conservation. Uh, we get open space impact fees and we can work with the land trusts and other partners to really hone in on these areas. You can't really see it, but at the, at, the, at the right there, it's the kind of the middle right 
there is a yellow line that circles the Beaver Dam Heath focus area. And that's a particularly precious area that is, is significant to the region. Not all towns have a focus area. We have one, and that is actually identified in the Great uh, Works Regional Land Trust. Their master plan, uh, their goal is to preserve as much of that as possible. And I've talked with Mike, and through a contact, um, I, I linked them with a property owner, and the land, I believe the land trust is working on acquiring some pieces in, in that um, focus area. The other cool map, um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but the dark green areas are continuous land that are undeveloped. People may be surprised that we have several land areas of over a thousand acres. I think we have three of them in town, a thousand acres, undeveloped, all contiguous, un undeveloped. In the also what might surprise people is we have a lot of conserved land already. It's a great starting point. The, the lime green and the orange are conserved lands in perpetuity. So with our open space um, impact fees, working with our partners, we wanna strategize and focus on areas that are the most endangered of being developed are what serve the most, um, I guess, most the, the highest value for um, natural resources. So back to my favorite topic, town growth. Um, if you look at the, the blue dotted line there, that was the, the rate we were growing at as of 1990. So the 1990 comprehensive plan talks about the 70s and 80s were unprecedented times of growth for the town. We will never experience that type of growth ever, ever again. Um, and you, you'll see the numbers that jump off the page. If we were, if we would have continued that rate in 1990, which by the way, we didn't have zoning until 1990, um, we would be at 9,500 people in town. So now we're at just over 8,000. And this illustrates the growth in a different way. So in the 70s, we saw 32% growth. In the 80s, we saw 44.5% growth. In the 90s, I mean, that's not all because of zoning, the growth. I think it's just the natural ebbs and flows of the housing market. Are there any questions, anything that comes to mind? Is that... Keep on going. And the, my other favorite chart here, it shows um, our school population, that we have four more kids in the school system than we had in 1989 where I was, when I was born. That was pretty even. Yeah, that's good. Huh? Yeah, we had we had the big surge and then it leveled out again. So. But, and the other make another point is, I believe it's somewhere between twenty and twenty five percent of households have kids. So the household size has decreased rapidly. So when it comes comes to housing coming downtown or even single family houses, only 20 to 25% of those households are going to have a kid in the school system. Oh. Speaking of housing, this is a massive regional wide effort and, and challenge. There's a massive housing shortage and the regional organizations have recognized that. Economic development, so like the, the state economist has identified this as a massive need. And I think we're gonna see more and more efforts to really meeting the call of this of this challenge. Housing is economic development. They are they are intrinsically linked. You need people to be able to afford to live in your town to be able to work in the jobs. Housing types 30 or 73 percent of households in Berwick are single family houses, nine percent are mobile homes. 5.5% are duplexes, 7.4% are apartment buildings. Um, the big ticket item or the, the trend is accessory dwelling units. So you have a single family house and you can carve out an extra apartment. That might be a good way to uh, meet the needs of senior housing or for younger people to increase the housing stock without eating up our natural resources. Uh, the graph on the right here, that just shows the building 
the house is built over the past 20 years. You had a peak in uh, 2004, 2005, 2006. You had the housing crash. Um, so the past three years, we've been at about 20 to 25 houses. And that pace has been has remained uh, the same for this year. We're at, we're at 14 houses this year. So by the end of the year, you'll probably see 25 houses. Economic development. This is a really telling chart. 87% of our tax base is dependent on the residents of the town. Only 6.4% of the of property taxes come from businesses. I think we can, I think we should be aggressive in increasing that figure. And, and how we do it, that's certainly part of the comprehensive planning. Increasing uh, what figure? The business tax, what they pay? Not increasing the taxes, but make increasing our tax base. Yeah, yeah okay. And, and, you know, you mentioned the edge across the street here before. You no. Know, and how many, how many business sites are they planning on having? Or right. So they're going to have 80,000, I think, is the estimate now of uh, square footage. And then that's 27 to 30 commercial units. So that's, I couldn't have, I, I, I couldn't have dreamed that five years ago. Like you told me, you told me 10. I would have been through the moon, but 27 or 30 is just, it's amazing. They, they, the Lowry's is for sale. Not the business, just the buildings. They're going to go out of business. Um, it'd be great if we could find someone to go in there. It's for sale now. If we could find someone to go in there and not a, a pot. Be someone's, already re <laughs> someone's already reached out to me about it. They already have? Yeah. A really? pot? Yeah. That's oh. not a lot. Speaking of Lowry's, this is the top 25 um, land property values in town. Um, the number one is CMP. Their, their value is at 17 million for their transmission lines. Two is prime storage. Three is Berwick self-storage. Four is Lowry's. So Lowry's is assessed at $2 million. We certainly want to make sure that someone goes in that building that's gonna take care of it. Cause if not, then the value is gonna decrease rapidly. Uh, I can I, I I highlighted in orange the properties that have been built in the past five years. So there's there's a good um, amount of businesses that have popped up recently that are making that list, and I, that doesn't include personal property. So I think once we include personal property, that'll be a little bit more um, informational on what's really happening in terms of revenue to the town. So if the edge site right now is number eleven, but I mean, that will be in five years, that number could very well be in the 10, 30, 40 million dollar range. And that's the whole point of doing it. I, I, think, I think it's interesting that out of all of those 25 you have listed, is how many of them are the storage units? Yeah, I know. I know. Who, who I was, was catching that too. I was like, wow. <laughs> No. So we're all in on a deal together. To <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure we got a plan in place. Yeah, so we go. Yeah, that'll be on the hate look page tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, Landlies, like I mentioned, actually the the shoreland zone I mentioned is on the left there. The current uh, base map is on the right there. And this and what happens is you have this zone, and then they, they're, it's put into tables, and there's standards for each zone. That's really the, the main regulatory tool. Things we're considering are adding a farm zone or an open space protection zone. So that would make it uh, much, we don't want to make it impossible to develop. So if you own a hundred acres of farmland, there are ways you can encourage them to cut off a sliver of that. You can reduce the requirements in that particular section. That way you don't cut their land. A lot of people look at land as their retirement or their bank. So we don't want to take that from people, but we want to allow them to develop a little bit, but preserve and protect the rest of it in perpetuity. Quick uh, fun fact, in 1990, 53% of survey responders lived on 10 acres or more. By 2020, that figure shrunk to 9.7%. So that may be a key into that a slight loss in that feel of rural character. Our lot sizes, you're not living on 10 acres, you're living on 
five acres or, or, or less. But the good news from a town's perspective is that the growth hasn't really branched out. It's kind of stayed. So there's been one house, one house, the houses have been kind of going in between each other rather than branching out and taking up all of the forested lands and open space. So the, right now, um, over the past 10 years, about half of it has happened in R3, which is our rural areas. That's where all the farmland is and open space. Uh, only a small percentage has been in the, our actual growth areas. That's not where we want it, but it also makes sense because R3 takes up, I mean, it's 75% of the land mass, but we still, we need to do more to encourage growth in our downtown. With the edge, we'll see a, a major positive shift with that goal. There'll be a lot of apartments downtown where we want them, where the infrastructure are. That's where the economy scales come from. So there, the main point for tonight is there's, this is kind of where we're at. We're not, we haven't really set a direction on what tool we're going to use or, or, or what policy it's going to set. I invite the board here to, to join us in kind of taking that leap with us and, and working on developing those policies and goals for the next five, 10, 20 years. Now is a really good good time to, to get involved. And um, we're, ju we're just chugging along. We're a year and a half into a three year process. So um, any, if you are interested in a particular topic or a subject, it would just be a massive help to just really all of us take a little nibbles at it. And when, when is the next meeting? Thank you, Tom. The <laughs> next meeting is Thursday at six o'clock. Um, right now we're doing it Zoom. We, I was planning on this being in person or hybrid, but the cases have popped off. So we'll be, we'll be virtual um, probably for the next month or two, but hopefully we'll start meeting in person. I, I plan on being in this week. Go cool. again. Cool. So the next stuff, the next main topics, we're going to be looking at growth areas. So where we want to further encourage the growth. So that would that would mean going into our land use or after we determine where our growth area is, we will go into our land use ordinance and relax some requirements to help growth go into those areas. At the same time, look at where we don't want growth and do the opposite make it more difficult to develop or encourage other tools. The other tool at our hands is the open space plan. So that will be identifying where the top areas we should go for conservation purposes. 